Good morning. It's 2023, a new year filled with prospects of good things from the Lord. Yes, there will be challenges. So how do we face them with a faith, a confidence that God will guide our daily lives? Well, let me tell you a story. During Christmas, I was seeing from Scripture how the Lord was so faithful to guide the participants in his narrative. God guided Joseph to take Mary home to be his wife, even though it appeared she had been unfaithful. She had not. God led him to Bethlehem. God led him to give his son the name Jesus. Yahweh is salvation. God guided him to Egypt to protect him from Herod's horrible plan to kill his son. After Herod died, God guided him back to the town of Nazareth to raise Jesus there. And then God guided Mary. God guided the shepherds to the place where Jesus lay. God guided the Magi. It's like God's hand of guidance was seen everywhere. And I will tell you, that truth intensified my faith, my confidence that God will also guide me and you. This morning, that came in the form of a test, <laughs> the care of my elderly mother. She's in the hospital, can't return to assisted living. Does she go to rehab? Which one? What do I do? And suddenly, as I was faced with these decisions, I had a confidence that God would guide me to make the right decisions. I did not fear that I'd make a mistake. I purposed that I would trust God to lead me, that he would make his will known. This unmistakable, unshakable peace came upon me, and I thanked him. So that led to a search of scriptures on the topic of God's guidance. He does lead our lives. What can we learn from these passages? That's what we're going to look at this week. Let's begin with this dramatic example. God's chosen people, they had increased to over a million in population. However, in time, the Pharaoh in Egypt was threatened by them and turned them into his slaves. They would work to build his palace. It was hard labor. The people cried out to God, and God heard their prayers. He prepared and sent them a leader who would confront Pharaoh with demonstrations of God's power. By the final appeal and plague, proud Pharaoh is humbled and broken and agrees to let God's people go. God delivered them from that land. He provided for their needs as they prepared to go. They were filled with riches. On the day of their departure, they were ready, and God guided them out of Egypt toward the promised land. He led them during the day with a cloud. At night, there was a pillar of fire. His guidance would be evident. And it was time to stay put, the cloud and fire would remain in place. When it was time to move, the cloud and fire would move, and they would gather their things and follow, trusting that God was leading them, ultimately, to a prosperous land. Oh, they were tested. I mean, after they left, Pharaoh changed his mind and sent his army after them. The army was swift and the people slow. The enemies would catch up to them, but God would hold them at bay. Then when they got to the barrier of the Red Sea, there was nowhere to go. What would they do? Did God really lead them to a dead end, only to be destroyed by their enemies? Of course not. God is still displaying his power. He leads Moses to raise up the rod he had given him. And when he does, when Moses expresses his faith in God, God parts the waters, making a way for the entire nation to pass through the sea to the other side. Yes, God made a way when it seemed that there was no way. He does that. Once everyone arrived safely, God closed the door. The waters returned, and the arrogant, foolish soldiers who had presumed that God's way was also intended for them found out quickly that it wasn't. And the people watched as their enemies were drowned in the sea, the consequences of their sinful ways. So Moses is inspired to write a song of praise to God for what he had done in guiding them. It's recorded in Psalm 15. It begins, I will sing to the Lord 
for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. And then further down in verse 13, we read these words uh, that give us insight about God's guidance. Moses declares, You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. <laughs> what insight. God was the one who led them. He did it because of his steadfast love for his people that he had chosen. He was faithful to guide them. And when his strength was needed, it was there. And he guided them to his holy abode, that is, to himself. God's guidance is ultimately expressed so that we will turn to him and trust him and love him. When I'm trusting God to guide me, I thank him that he will, even before he does. Now, that is my faith expressed. And it also helps me if I'm tempted to doubt or be anxious. Then when God does guide me, I thank him, partly to remind myself that he has been faithful to do as he said. So, as we begin the year 2023, let's affirm our trust that God will guide us each day. Let's not doubt that he will. Let's not be anxious that he won't. Let's trust him and then follow his lead. We'll talk about this more tomorrow, but for today, listen again to God's word, Moses' song. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. Let's pray. Lord, forgive us when we doubt or are anxious about anything. Teach us to trust you, to have the confidence that you will guide us each moment of each day to do your will. Today, we agree, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. Now, you continue. God bless you. Thank you for listening to Mornings with Pastor Jim. This podcast is a ministry of Family Church PC. For more information or to contact us, go to familychurchpc.com. Have a blessed day.